We are back. Episode four, Little Stinkers, baby. We back. Hell yeah. Woo. Welcome Don, back to Little Stinkies. Don Kelgello. <laughs> it's crapping pimp. Bike Rainey. Good to see you. Cool. See you. Jake Matera, thanks for coming back with us, buddy. The, that left-handed dance shake is getting creepier and creepier. It's everywhere. very offsetting. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we shouldn't do it. <laughs> but we're going to keep doing it. We are. All right. Two lefties out. Outweigh the one righty. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's coin flip time. It is coin flip time. Either Impractical Jokers podcast. Heads. Or another funny murderer. All right. That would be Tails. And away we go. Woo, Tails again. You are on one hell of a streak, buddy. <laughs> one of these days, we're coming for you, Murr. <laughs> <laughs> All right, baby. So, you know how much we like to clown around, right, guys? Ooh, I'm down to clown. All right. So, who do you think we had to choose for this one? I have an idea. <laughs> Who's your idea? Murr? <laughs> <laughs> they all be clowning, though. Uh, John Wayne. The Duke Gacy. Nailed it, baby. Fuck yeah. John Wayne Gacy. The only clown, killer clown I know that exists in real life outside of movies. Is dude, that... he's a good one. He had an extremely prolific clown career. He had two <laughs> clown characters, too, dude. Pogo Damn. the Clown and Patches the Clown. Were they both available for hire at the same time, or did he go from one <laughs> to the other, like Dumb. a phase of his career? That's a great question, because he had a helper who worked at his construction uh, business who he would have play patches if he were playing pogo whoa but he would if he was going on a, on a solo job he would yeah. pick either pogo or patches now pogo was the happier of the clowns patches was the real motherfucker so i believe it was dependent upon his mood wow so and this is all for children right so children primarily. might end up with a smiley Dude, or he, frowny guy a lot of children stuff but also like he just liked to ham it up you know which one was happy, which one was sad? Yeah, Pogo was the happy one, and Patches yeah. was the sad one. <laughs> I mean, Patches sounds like he was dressed up in fucking ragamuffin style mm -hmm. with a stick and bindle kind of clown. It's funny you mention that because I don't know that there's any actual pictures of Patches the clown. Now, all the shit that... <laughs> It's too fucked up. He was fucking camera shy, but Pogo was all about it, dude. Dude, everything you see is Pogo. That's unbelievable, dude. You know why it's I call like a fucking terrorist that doesn't get seen on camera for his whole life. <laughs> you know why I called himself Pogo? Why? Because he was Polish and he was always on the go. For real? Yep. It Gacy. had nothing to do with the bouncing thing? Nope. Oh, wow. I thought you were going to say he used his penis as a Pogo stick. Nah, he was a Polish hustler, dog. Hell yeah. Yep. I'm a Pole. Are you really? 50. Oh, which side? Um, the half. Warsaw? <laughs> <laughs> it's very Polish uh, of you. Both sides. I have one Polish grandparent on mom and dad's side. Oh, wow. How about that? Did they know each other? I don't think, no. Oh. No, different neighborhoods growing up. Probably two miles away and had no chance of ever coming across each other. Oh, so they were pure rogies. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking making me hungry in here? <laughs> what are you here to make me hungry? <laughs> All right, so John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, I don't know anything about this fucking pervert clown. Dude. Is he pervy? <sighs> Man. So, this is the fourth one we're doing, and I can honestly say that before we started doing these little stinkers, I couldn't tell you the last time I had a nightmare. Man. I have them almost every fucking night Jesus now. Jesus Christ. Jesus. And You're going to stop doing your research right before bed. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I've, I've been looking up a ton of Gacy shit the past couple weeks, and it's just fucking nightmare. I feel stressed, too, during the day, because I'll listen to this shit, like, when I'm driving to and from work. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I'll just put it on, like, if I'm chilling, I'll just be like, all right, well, I can watch a little Gacy right now. I'll put something on. <laughs> but it just immediately skyrockets my blood pressure because of how fucked up it was. Feeling kind of Gacy. Wasn't it his solo album? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a Dolly Parton song. <laughs> Gacy and the Sunshine Band. <laughs> Going back to the clown shit. One of the things that made him especially creepy, I think people get creeped out because they know when they see the photo of him, like, yeah, this is the dude that murdered 33 dudes at least. Jesus Christ. But when you look at his pictures, one of the, the, the most distinct feature about his Pogo the Clown makeup is that it's not done the way that a typical clown is. Like, a typical clown has rounded edges. 
every everything all this makeup is done in an angular fashion okay which yeah, makes him I threaten never even have thought of that dude and i think they used that same logic when they made pennywise Okay, and I feel like uh, Joaquin Phoenix Joker had, like, diamond over his eyes That would make bit. sense. Huh. So this is the original Joker, though. The OG. <laughs> uh, what year did he start clowning? 50s, 60s? Uh, I have to check my notes. When, when we get further down the chronological order, like, I, yeah, I want to yeah. talk about Because there's something that Don't he did. get ahead of it. No, there's, there, there's something that he did that really fucking cracked me up in regards to... Um, Officially becoming a clown. All right, because he was a part of a couple different organizations that <laughs> required membership. No way. Yeah, man. This, Even this, in is, the this is legit. 50s and 60s? This is legit, dude. They're not fucking around. Damn. They're not clowning around here, dude. <laughs> yeah. I think they'd be a little less serious. Yep. But he was born in the suburbs of Chicago. Um, grew up in a household. It was his mom, his dad, and his two sisters. The dad was an absolute cocksucker. Abusive to everybody, but he was especially abusive towards John. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that was primarily because he knew early on that John was probably gay. And yeah. it just infuriated him. Okay. I and, knew that. And John, I, I know John deep down knew that he was gay, although he never actually admitted that. He admitted that he was, that he was bisexual. Okay. He would never come out and admit that he was gay. That could be true. Yeah. Well, Even though it's dude, not a real I got, thing. I got to read you this quote that I found today. <laughs> The quote Just was kidding, like, it's real. The, um, the author of this New Yorker article was asking him about his sexuality. And when he was trying to convince the, the author of the article that he was bisexual, he said, no man never got anything from me above the waist. There's not you much can't going be gay. on above the waist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't kiss them. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a This is a puzzle I'm trying to solve right baller now. Baller way to look at that, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, when he would do shit, like, you could see it in, like, in any interview that they had with him. It, with him, it was just always about creating misdirections. And it was always about trying to, to give an illusion because it doesn't seem like there's, like, a real person under there. So with him trying to make these, these kind of, like, uh, these explanations for his behavior, none of it makes sense. But I think with him, it's just all about trying to be as convincing as possible. Yeah. Like I could, like if I were John Wayne Gacy, I would tell you that your hat is red right now, and then when you came back at me to convince me it was yellow, I would eventually call you light in the loafers and tell you to get the fuck out of my house for wearing a yellow hat, for wearing a red hat. Nah, but then on the way out, he'd be like, "Yellow ass hat, ass motherfucker." <laughs> <laughs> so he's a fucking uh, classic gaslighter. Yep, one of the first of its kind. A mm -hmm. term that I learned. It's a good one. Last week, were you gaslit into? Believing anything, I'm sure. Yeah. When somebody gave you that explanation as to guess what gaslight yeah, yeah. was, yeah. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> it's all good. I've recovered. <laughs> oh, so his mother named him John Wayne because that was her favorite actor. All right, that's. Thank God. He was born in forty two. Nineteen forty two. St. Patrick's Day, nineteen forty two. Damn, his dad was probably. Fucking wasted that day. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that's alcoholic. why he was so angry. It just ruined yeah. his whole day. Yeah, dude. He's just getting hammered in the basement. <laughs> Taking care of business. What? I gotta drive my bitch now! fucking wife. <laughs> Fuck me. You know what day it is? <laughs> Bachman Turner overdrives fucking down here rocking me. But lucky for him, man, because if you're a serial killer, John Wayne Gacy might be the best serial killer name. So thank God his mom's favorite actor was John Wayne because... You would have to fucking kill yourself if you were a serial killer and your name was like Rick Moranis Gacy. <laughs> no chance of being infamous with that name. Yeah, I've only ever known clown name. I know the name and the clown pops up in my head. Mm -hmm. And it's creepy enough. I didn't know he fucking killed 33 people. Though. That's... Shoo! Um, <laughs> I want to get a little more of the backstory out of the way before I get into it. There's so much fucked up shit to get into. But... With a lot of these guys, like, they seem to have, like, a significant head injury. Now, Gacy seems to want to explain uh, a significant head injury, but to me it doesn't compute because he says when he was, like, I think he was 11, and he says that he was hit in the head by a swing, and it caused a blood clot in his brain. I don't buy it, do you? Were swings made of metal back then? I don't know, dude. I feel like they were. Yeah. They were fucking, like, industrial, hot-ass 
hot ass in the sun ass <laughs> fucking <laughs> swinging ass seats. Uh, I mean, that could be made up, but it seems plausible for the era. There okay. was no rubber fucking seats back then. All right, I, I can see that. And plus, he was, he was a little porker, too. So, you know, if you're fat and you get hit with something when you're a kid, it's not just the thing hitting you. It's you tumbling yeah, down, yeah. ending up in a bush, <laughs> getting hit by a kid riding a bike as he rides past you. <laughs> so there's probably a few other bumps and bruises along the way. He's a preteen, teen, like young teenager when this happens. <laughs> Preteen. Not, not being able to buy a cheeseburger today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was preteen, and he spent a lot of time in the hospital as a kid for various things. I think he was just fucked up, and that was a way for him to get um, to get attention. And it sounds like his mom... That's a fucking expensive way to get attention. His mom might have been a little munchausy, too. What's that mean? Oh, okay. Like, she... Part of like her care for him involved keeping him sick or deliberately hurting him. I don't think she was deliberately hurting him, but I think she would buy into whatever he said was wrong with him. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. If you take a kid to the fucking hospital, they're at least gonna, you know, go through all the fucking bells and whistles mm-hmm. for you to cool. humor you. Also, that gets you out of the house from your alcohol. Oh yeah, it's good, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was any of those hospital visits for him getting his fucking ass no, beat by his dad? He had appendicitis. He had the fucking swing thing. And then it sounds like a lot of the shit was also anxiety related, too. So he yeah. would go there for fucking what seems like panic attacks. Mm-hmm. So he gets through there and he gets through high school, you know, with a relatively like normal childhood, aside from like one very fucked up thing happening. So a guy who was a family friend. I've, I've read that it was an uncle, but it seems like kind of one of those deals where it's just like a dude that hangs around that it's just like, oh, here's Uncle so-and-so. And Uncle Beef. Yeah, and Uncle yeah. Beef. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Jesus. So this was an Uncle Beef type. And he would show up and like he would do this fucked up shit where he found out that, that John Wayne Gacy was into wrestling. And he would want to talk wrestling with him. And then eventually, like one day, he convinced the parents to let him take out John Wayne Gacy for ice cream. Very Uncle Beavy. Yeah. Um, and while he took him out, he's like, I got a move I want to show you. And the way this move was described was that he placed Gacy's, like, head under his hamstring and just started to, like, crush it while he was sitting down. Jesus Christ. This is this supposed to be, like, Greco-Roman, or is there already WWF-style wrestling <laughs> at that point? Uh, this is actually uh, Uncle Iron Sheik, so I think it's <laughs> WWF. <laughs> So uh, he, he put him in the camel clutch in the front seat of this pickup truck. <laughs> but he would come back and he would, he would regularly take this fucking kid out. Yeah. And each time it would progress and it got to the point where like he was making him touch him. And then that was a move that like I've, I've read that he did a couple of times. Putting his head under his fucking hamstring as he like tried to choke him with it. Yeah. And he would make him like touch him. Like so his head's down and he's making him feel around without being able to see. Yes, yeah. yeah. So pretty fucked up shit. Yeah. Very Kid feeling up. helpless and getting his ass whipped by his dad at home. So it's like he's he's definitely on the fast track to becoming a serial killer. Yeah. The only dude that's coming to take you away from your dad is also <laughs> <laughs> like just fucking you up mentally. <laughs> so he makes it through high school and immediately after graduating from high school, has a big blow up with his dad. His dad's fucking with him. He has like his dad hooked him up with the car, but the deal was he had to pay the dad a hundred bucks a month to keep this car. Now, this is the fucking this is nineteen sixty. Yeah, it seems kind of so, steep. Yeah, a hundred bucks is a lot of fucking yeah. money for this kid. And Gacy works, man. He's he's always got a strong work ethic, and you'll see it. Like whatever he sets his mind to, he really does a good job at it, and he really excels. But he falls behind in his estimation by only one payment. So. The dad, to fuck with him, takes off the distributor cap. Okay. So he can't start the car. Yeah. So he's losing his mind, and then eventually, three days after he did this, he put it back on. I don't know if Gacy paid him, or the dad just had his point proven, yeah, yeah. and was just like, all right, motherfucker. Gacy has enough. He fucking hightails it out to Las Vegas. Damn. All he right. Got, now, the reason why I think he went out there was he had a cousin who was a high-end prostitute, who was just- Guy cr- or girl? A lady okay. who was just crushing it out in Las Vegas. And he wanted to try to make a go of it just because, you know, he wanted to start a new life. He just got out of high school, wanted to get away from his fucking family. Okay. But he yeah, goes yeah. out there. And and what's his mindset? Like, 
he doesn't want to go prostitute. What's he want to do in no, Vegas? No, dude, I, I think he just went out there just because it seemed like a cool place he had always heard of. Yeah, and, and his could end cousin up doing was going out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, he quickly loses almost all of his money within the first couple of days. Yeah, everything fucking goes wrong, and to make matters worse, he loses a, a bunch of his money at a casino, and he's just devastated, and he goes to sit in his fucking car, and it's so fucking hot that as he's sitting there just contemplating in his car, he passes out from the heat. Whoa. Oof. Yeah. Check those windows, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> the fireman had to save him. <laughs> yeah. He's in the clown makeup, just, yeah. just yeah. makeup just smudged. <laughs> but the cops come, and they're like, buddy, you should go to the hospital. He's like, look, man, I don't, I don't have any money to fucking pay for a hospital bill, an ambulance. But I have nothing. They're like, don't worry, the county will take care of it. So he goes there, he gets treated. They're just like, yeah, dude, just fucking don't sit in a hot car, you dickhead. <laughs> you fucking mongoloid. <laughs> All his balloons are fucking popped at this point. <laughs> but they're like, yeah, dude, just don't fucking sit in a hot car and drink some water. He's like, all right. <laughs> they end up billing him anyway for the fucking ambulance Damn. ride. Damn. And fucking EMS just lying to your ass. Yeah, get in, it'll be free. It's like a cop saying, ah, it's just a <laughs> ticket. You don't have to show up to court. Fucking officer by T style, I'm looking at your ass. <laughs> <laughs> but they they fucking got him because it turns out he got billed for it. Yeah. And I don't know why he was so he was so honorable to this, but he was so broken up by the fact that he owed a bill that he went to the ambulance company and he spoke to the manager there and was like, Look, I don't have any money to fucking pay for this, but I'll wash ambulances, I'll do whatever you need. Wow. Just just tell me what to do for as long as I need to do it to pay off my debt. And the manager took a liking to him. It was like, look, dude, fucking we'll figure something out. But in the meantime, just, yeah, you can hang out. You can fucking wash ambulances, do whatever you want. He did that for a while. But then there was like some kind of weird stipulation with ambulance workers in Las Vegas where after I think like maybe three or six months on the job, they had to get like some kind of card. It might have been a union card. They needed to maybe become part of the union uh -huh. at that point. And he wasn't able to get in. So but he's all, isn't he just working off a debt though? Does he, he like, need to be in the union for like for this to happen? Well, he wants like, to he wants to stay out there though. Oh, he's so just he's to thinking like more. This, this is like a long a term thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's thinking this is more of like a long term thing. Mm -hmm. So the guy's like, all right, look, you can't keep working here because of this bullshit. But I can get you a gig at the mortuary. He's like, all right, well, I kind of need a place to live, too. So the guy's like, well, you can fucking sleep at the mortuary, too. Damn. This is where you start to see shit kick off in his mind because he's left alone with all these fucking dead bodies. Yeah. And he's crushing it, though. I mean, like, he feel, he, he's a pallbearer for a lot of funerals for people that need pallbearers. Yeah. And he's doing well at this job, so he's really in fucking hog heaven. Damn. Until one night they have uh, a dead... 15 year old in a coffin and he just can't contain himself no oh uh, no, duke no yeah dude one of the th one of the um one of my references said that he was turned on by the fact that this this dead body was the penis was rock hard damn so he couldn't contain himself so he climbed into the coffin with this body just to fucking chill with it. Jesus Christ. Yeah, dude. Did he, did he put it anywhere? Um, it's, it's his word against everybody else's at this point. It's his word against a dead boner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's weak in a boner. <laughs> People walk in and I'm sucking this dead dude's dick. And he's like, it's not what you think. <laughs> no, he let me do it. <laughs> He knows what's going on. He's letting us use the house for the weekend. It's like that scene in Clerks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's seven minutes. That That's you, right. Yeah, yeah. But, dude, even Gacy's fucking creeped out by their shit at this point. So. Yeah, he, he went. He overboarded himself by sucking off a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? This is too much for me. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> Just gets out and he slams the coffin shut. <laughs> He's half pogo, half patches, just turning to himself in the mirror. That's so patches, though, man. <laughs> Damn. That one almost went out my nose. But, dude, that's so much even for fucking Gacy. Yeah. So, um, 
within a couple of days, it might even even been the next day, he calls back home, and because he left on bad terms, he wants to fucking clear it up with his parents. Yeah. Talks to his mom. He's like, yo, is dad going to be fucking furious yeah. if I come back home right now? Has he just been pacing a moat around the house? <laughs> the mom just locked him in the basement. <laughs> it's like a bad dog that they don't want to let up. But eventually the parents do, do relent. They want him to come back home. Mm-hmm. Now, at this point, like, he's a changed man. Like, he's been crushing it. And this is this seems like the first time in his life where he's been able to demonstrate that he's actually good at something. Mm-hmm. So he's carrying that momentum forward, and he immediately enrolls in, uh, I think it's called Northwestern Business College. And it's a, it's a short program. He ends up graduating and crushes it in, in fucking business school. And upon graduating, he gets a gig working for the Nunbush Shoe Company. Okay. I feel like I've heard of that. Yeah, they still make shoes today. Yeah, yeah they still make shoes today. He, he did pretty well. Um, they send him to Waterloo, Iowa. And while he's there, falls in love with one of his coworkers. She's, she, she's crazy about him. They end up getting engaged. Now, interesting aspect of this lady is that her dad owns three KFC franchises. Damn. You're never going to guess who loves KFC. Not the Duke. The Duke was licking his fingers. Literally and figuratively, John. Damn. Yeah, dude. So imagine that. Oh, this is all in Chicago Mm -hmm. area? No, this is is in in Iowa at this point. Yeah, Yeah. and this woman is from Iowa. So she's crazy about him, and he's like, yeah, let's get married. Let's fucking tear it up. Okay, yeah, I thought he was married. I feel like I thought... He got married twice. Okay, yeah. So he's getting the pussy. Did he have kids? He did. He had two in his first marriage, and then his second marriage, he had two adoptive kids. I don't know that he Uh, ever officially adopted them, but they were essentially, they were his second wife's kids. Yeah. That's a bi guy, bro. (laughs) If you're coming in pussies, you're bi. I I think he's actually, uh, John, I think he is also responsible for the everything bowl at KFC as well. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I heard he had his last wish was to double down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what's your last meal? Can you just put everything in a bowl? That sounds delicious. Jake, do you say that because you know what his last meal was? No, I don't know what his last meal was. Do you? You want to take a wild guess? What's Thanksgiving a dinner. That was part of it. Wow. A bucket? They made him go to a KFC Taco Bell uh, <laughs> combo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, throw in some uh, cheesy gordita yeah. crunch in there. Gordita. <laughs> the fucking... The, <laughs> the correction guys in the tower's like, he's making a run for it. And another correction guy's like, no, he's making a run for the border. <laughs> he had a bucket of KFC for his last meal. Uh, a dozen fried shrimp. <laughs> French fries. And... Something crazy. It was like a quart of strawberries or something like that. Hmm. The strawberries kind of throws me off. There. Yeah, yeah. He's just doing like Otherwise, the rider, uh, where, <laughs> the rider that has green M and M's. So like he knows that he's do- they're doing it right. <laughs> they did everything by the coast. The, the sad thing that just sounds like a Tuesday for me. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, I was on a fucking website. I didn't know you looked at strawberries. <laughs> <laughs> I like to step on them. <laughs> I was looking at on this website today, which they were like listing serial killers' last meals, and then they recreated them. <laughs> and Christ. the image of of the fucking fried chicken and the fried shrimp and the French fries and the strawberries, dude, together. my mouth was watering. Dude, was this Heskey's channel, the, the, the depression? <laughs> I was actually on a Zoom with Heskey. Yeah. Jesus Christ. How did you find a YouTube wow. channel that recreates death row meals? That's amazing. God damn. Can we not? Can I not think of anything first? <laughs> so not only does his, his wife's dad own three KFC franchises, when they get married, this is every fucking KFC lover's dream. Father-in-law pulls him aside and says, John, I want you to manage my KFCs. Oh, my God. I thought you were just going to say the colonel married them. Uh, well, not too far off, buddy. What the fuck is the colonel well, going to meet Gacy? He loved lying. Did he get married in a white suit? <laughs> <laughs> dude, he was he, a little stinker for a lot of reasons, but one of the things he was a little stinker about was he loved lying. And he would regularly tell people that his wife's father was Colonel Sanders. Nice. Dude. It's a pretty good lie. And he made him the manager of three locations. <laughs> Let's see how you do, buddy. 
married <laughs> to the top guy. Wow. They wrote their own vows, and like his vows that his, fa- his father in law slipped to him was actually the secret recipe. Yeah, the eleven herbs. <laughs> promise, to, promise to love, honor, cumin, garlic. Oh my God, is this is this what I think it is? <laughs> Cor- coriander. What? I wonder if after every line, uh, Gacy was like, "Is that it? Is that it? Is that it?" <laughs> um, yeah. So. Dude, and you can't just walk in to a KFC franchise and just start managing. I, I got to believe that you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to believe. I should be able to go to KFC and just skip everything and go right to manager. You think you could skip KFC boot camp? Yes, I think I could skip any fast food chain's boot camp. What go the? right <laughs> to manager. I know their restaurant's better than... Their menus are better than anybody in what there. What would KFC's boot camp look like? <laughs> well, Jake, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, they have KFC school. And John Wayne Gacy completed KFC school with flying colors. Oh, my God. And he was then able to manage three KFCs in Waterloo, Iowa, upon which he demanded that all of his subordinates refer to him as the colonel. Oh, my God. What? Yep. That what, rocks. Was yeah. his certification made out to Pogo or Patches? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Gacy managed one, Pogo managed one, and Patches <laughs> managed another one. Dude, that's crazy. And that's like before it was owned by Pepsi, right? Doesn't yeah. Pepsi own all of them now? Yeah, I think Pepsi bought them in the in the 90s. Talk about Pizza Hut, and, Long John Silver's, KFC. Yeah. Yeah. I miss the the trifecta. I do. Like when they used to do Taco Bell, Pizza Hut, and KFC. In one location, you're saying? Yeah, they used I've to be. I've never seen Oh, man, one. they used to be all around here. I've only seen combos of just two of all of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then slowly they've kind of, they've, they've cut off Pizza Hut now completely. It's making a comeback. Is Pizza it? Hut, I see next to where I live, reopened during COVID. Oh, man. It was closed when I moved there, and then it reopened the six months bar? later. No, uh, no, because they all went delivery only. Okay. As soon as they added Wing Street to the sign, they oh, shut they down the buffets. Dude. Huh? Motherfuckers. Yeah. That sucks. Going to the fucking Pizza Hut buffet was the shit. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Like, eating inside the Pizza Hut was awesome. You ever go to CC's buffet? I think I've been there once. Wasn't impressed with it. Yeah, I've never done it, but people have mentioned it to me because they talk like, about loving pizza and they you get as much like as you want. Macaroni and cheese pizza yeah get the fuck out of here yeah that's like, too that's much a pile of slop now if it's a cheeseburger pizza i'm listening <laughs> yeah <laughs> i have a knife and fork yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so gacy is fucking killing it with his kfc's it's every chicken lover's dream come true <laughs> <laughs> you're getting the pussy and you're getting the chicken <laughs> the dude's stacking chicken he's getting laid all yep. day long it's <laughs> finger licking <laughs> but yeah, not only imagine, but just imagine like you you you're granted access to manage three KFCs, and they're just like, oh, you got to go to KFC school too. You get to go to KFC college. Had to put on a fucking uh, a bow tie, whatever the fucking yeah yeah. God damn it. He and I had I, to know the fucking word to make the joke work. Edit it. <laughs> <laughs> but like I mentioned, like he crushed it at KFC college. He graduated magna cum laude. <laughs> <laughs> but things are going so well And I can tell that his heart is swelling with gratitude at this point <laughs> And he's like, look, man I gotta find a way to give back He's in his 20s right now, right? Uh, this is uh, 42 Yeah, late 20s Okay, 60s So this is, I, I believe, 1960 something Three So it's he's like, still pretty young Like he, it's Wow, this is the beginning of like he's fast 21. food, right? Yeah I don't know I'm when McDonald's started I'm surprised there's three KFCs in a manageable area at that point. They were fucking good for the colonel. He's probably driving. He's, he's probably driving around. A, lo- a while. Yeah, maybe 30 like miles two, between stops. Yeah, maybe two hours. Who knows? I don't no, know. No, 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 no. Yeah, McDonald's was what, in the 50s? Yeah. So, th- yeah, this was the fast food boom. Yeah. They're already doing burgers. Let's do th- some chickens. So in 1963, he's crushing it so hard. Heart is just swelling with gratitude. In his mind, I can picture him be like, I got to give back to my community. What do you guys think he does? 
quits the job, becomes a clown, and starts murdering his neighbors? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> when you say that, I feel like he's just standing in the back of a truck handing out turkeys. Am I a chicken man's handing out turkeys? <laughs> you fucking moron. <laughs> That's what I think about. Did when, you fucking hear when, yourself when, say that? When, when, when I hear "give back to me? the community," it's giving out turkeys. <laughs> That's all I think of. He's throwing live chickens at poor people. <laughs> he installs a rooster on every corner. <laughs> not uh, well, not quite. In in 1963, he joins a civic organization called the JCs, which is short short for United States Junior Chamber. Okay. So, on paper, the JCs are into building your community, building leadership skills, inspiring the next generation to do the same, and just leaving, leaving your surroundings a better place than how you found them. Gotcha. That's on paper. Yeah. In reality, the JCs were into prostitution. Like getting, like getting head or like running a ring? Getting head. Okay. Drugs. That's what's up, though. Getting ahead. <laughs> <laughs> drugs. Doing drugs or selling them? Doing drugs, buddy. Okay, okay. They're all just imbibing in the thing. They're not like a um, gang. No. Uh, they're getting money turned the fuck shit. up. Yeah. Uh, that fucking rules. Drinking heavily. Fucking watching porno together. This is just a fucking Elks Lodge. Dog. <laughs> wife swapping. <laughs> Holy, Holy shit. shit. Yeah, dude. So drugs, alcohol, wife swapping, porno. You guys love that shit, right? <laughs> yeah. As soon as I left KFC school, it's the first kind of shit I got into. Jake, how about you? Oh, man, that's my jam. All right. I'm glad you both like it because I took the honor of signing you both up as honorary JC. <laughs> so I, I took the initiative to do this is what I meant to say. So uh, Jonathan Wayne Del Calo. Oh, my God. Welcome to the JCs. This is granted to Jonathan Wayne Del Calo for his interest in wife swapping, prostitution, drug use, watching porno with other JCs, and improving his community. Oh my God. So you were Jake Wayne Matera. <laughs> so congratulations. You are now members of the Phoenixville, Pennsylvania member uh, charter <laughs> charter chapter of the Why fucking is it JCs. Phoenixville? It's the closest one. Yeah, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania is the closest one to us. So congratulations. Who's Dennis Froggins? I made it up. You're really not. <laughs> Come on, the, keep the lie going. Yeah. There's just going to be FBI guys in the <laughs> window behind us. Dude. Oh, man. You make a hell of a fake certificate, Mike. Thanks, buddy. Yeah, that's <laughs> legit. <laughs> All right, so in... This is... um. I did it. This is my Gatorade. <laughs> did you not print yourself one? I didn't, buddy. You did not? <laughs> we all need him. He's off the grid. <laughs> I watch porno alone, baby. <laughs> all right, so 60, 67 shit starts to fall apart for John Wayne Gacy. Um, he invites the son of a fellow JC, this kid, Donald Voorhees is the kid's name, 15 years old. He, he meets everything on Gacy's checklist. Mm-hmm. So Gacy invites him over. Gacy's got a pretty sick setup at home in his rec room. He's got a pool table. He's got a tiki bar. Damn. Yeah. Dude. Now, he gets the kid to come over his house. By Wait, he's living with the lady, right? He is. Yeah. However. Damn, she let him run a little wild. That's what's up. You, you got it. You know what you got on your hands. You got to let this chick in fucking cluck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he invites this kid, Donald Voorhees, over under the pretense that they're just going to watch some porn together. 15, wants to watch some porn. He's like, all right, yeah, I'll come by. Comes over, sexually assaults the kid, sodomizes him. Oof. Yeah, fucked up. He gets the feeling that um, Donald Voorhees is going to report the crime. And he does. Donald yeah. Voorhees actually, he tells his father and... You raped a 15-year-old. They don't fucking... Yeah. <laughs> even, in, even in fucking 67, like they're just like, all right, we got to fucking look into this. Yeah. So he does that. Gacy's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And the cops are on his side because he is an upstanding member of the community. He's a, he's an active member in, pol in local politics too. Yeah, he, dude, he was actually he was a prominent member of the um, the Democratic Party in the Chicago area. So much mm -hmm. so that um, Jimmy Carter's wife came through town for some fucking Polish pride parade they had going on, 
and Gacy was the organizer for the after party, and he yeah. decided who got into the event and who didn't. Damn. And he even Whoa. has a, he even has a picture with Rosalind Carter. Huh. But the police confront him about it. They're like, "Dude, what the fuck happened?" And he's like, "This kid's telling tales." Yeah. So Gacy hires a, another kid that he knows, which is I believe was also the son of a fellow JC member. Says, "Look, fucking this kid's gonna get me fucking tripped up. I need you to fuck this kid up and tell him to drop the charges." So this kid now lures uh, this Voorhees kid out to the fucking woods, maces him, and beats the shit out of him. Jesus. And says, it, under the, he told him he was going to pay off his car if he did this. So this is a, another young kid. He's like, all right, fuck it. I need my car paid off. Yeah. So he maces this kid, and he beats the shit out of him. Uh, Dennis Voorhees, or I'm sorry, Donald Voorhees, he escapes, and he ends up hiding in a cornfield, and he ends up going to police and saying, look, this just fucking happened. This kid said he did this because fucking John yeah. Wayne Gacy told him to. So the police are like, all right, what the fuck, man? Eventually he goes to court. 68, he's eventually convicted of sodomy. Whoa. So he's sentenced to 10 years in prison. Holy shit. Yeah, pretty fucked up. He's sentenced to 10 years in prison at Anamosa State Penitentiary. Goes to prison. You know Gacy's going to Gacy. He can't just go to prison and just leave it at that. He's a little stinker. Motherfucker starts clowning. <laughs> he tears it. He fucking clowns it up. He starts clowning in jail. <laughs> Dog, you want to know what kind of project he took on in jail? What? He said, jail fucking sucks. I'm building a miniature golf course. <laughs> wow. Jesus Christ, dude. What is this, Caddyshack 2? Close, dude. dude. Dude, he was so good at manipulating people that he was able to curry favor with the inmates and curry favor with not only the guards, but the administration in the prison. Jesus Christ. He was a pretty good cook. So he was able to secure a job in the kitchen. And anytime food would come in there, well, especially with, with the meat, he would secure the best, best cuts of meat for the warden and the other administrators of the prison. Yeah. So he was really good at, at preparing food, and he would prepare these delicious meals for them. And he would use that as an opportunity to kind of get what he wanted. Yeah. And they were cool with him. He, he was cool with them. So they gave him a lot of what he wanted. But also, he was able to, to gain favor with the inmates because he negotiated raises for everybody that worked in the kitchen. God damn. Yeah, he's fucking crushing it, dude. fucking crazy. Yeah, he's fucking crushing it. And the fucking mini golf thing is serious. It's still there. Oh my god! You could stay. Dude, you could dude. still play mini golf at Anamosa State Penitentiary. The, that is the, fucking insane. Anamosa State Penitentiary in fucking Iowa, in Anamosa, Iowa, <laughs> seems like the coolest fucking prison on earth. <laughs> yeah, is there a please. fucking fun house and a hall of mirrors? Yeah, like, please tell me there's a clown. You have to hit the ball into the mouth of. <laughs> Jake, you're not too far off because today I watched a video of them doing magic in prison. Wow. Jesus, which man. I seems like. At first, I was like, all right, this is kind of dangerous to teach these guys. But then again, yeah. like most of the guys in there have probably sleight already cut hand. a lady in half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, teaching them sleight of hand and how to remove handcuffs. <laughs> oh, the guard's now wearing my yeah. handcuffs. Is this your watch? <laughs> <laughs> is this your b baton? <laughs> <laughs> but he, even though he was sentenced to 10 years, he was fucking crushing it and everything he did. He got promoted to head cook. While he was in there. So not only did he get raises and building miniature golf courses for everybody, but, you know, he, he's he's in charge there. That's fucking crazy. Did he do his full his full bid? No. He did 18 months. What? He got all that done in 18 yeah. months? Oh, my God. Jesus Christ, dude. I've been playing dude. fucking Warzone for 18 months, and I still suck at it. John. John Jake. I'm not a conspiracy man, but 18 months, 18 holes on a miniature golf course. <laughs> 18 is the age of consent. <laughs> 18 spices in the Colonel's secret recipe. God damn, that is fucking insane. You've got to go into prison with blueprints already. <laughs> Do they have Adderall back then? How do you get all this done? Wow. That's crazy. Like, I wonder where they took the golf course from, though. Like, was there a different part of the, like, the prison that was then removed? Like where they lifted weights or like the yard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or was this like an extension? They didn't have weights. They just had an oversized clown head. <laughs> the, the jaw detached. <laughs> They're just like, all right, I guess if these guys are done squatting with this, we could put it in yeah. the 18th hole. <laughs> Part of the conditions of his parole was that he had to get the fuck out of Iowa. 
Really? And that, and that he couldn't go back to Waterloo, Iowa, where this kid was from. And at first, God. he was like, fuck that. I'm... I'm chilling in Iowa and okay, I'm Yeah, I'm gonna fuck that kid's butt again. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going right back. <laughs> he could have done that, but a fellow JC convinced him to just fucking hightail it out of there and go back to Chicago. Okay. Now during this time, his wife had left him with the kids and he never saw the wife and the kids again. No shit. So he's Those a free biological man. kids too, yeah. right? Yeah. Yep. He's, he's still biologi- writing them letters like he's from prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got nine more years. <laughs> Shot a thirty-two today. It's three hundred par. <laughs> Just keep sending scorecards. <laughs> All of his letters are written in little pencils. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable, right. dude. So he what gets out of prison, nineteen seventy, nineteen seventy-one. Dude, he's getting those urges back. He's starting to werewolf hard again. Yeah. So he starts cruising. This is kind of Dahmer-esque. In, in, it in is. The, uh, oh, dude, yeah. there's a lot of parallels here. Yeah. He starts cruising for Young Tail, and there's a Greyhound station in Chicago that he frequents, and he's like, all right, I'm going to pick up young kids here. Man. Picks a kid up, sexually assaults him, and he eventually gets charged for the assault. But then the charges were dismissed when the kid that he assaulted tried to blackmail him. Wow. I didn't know that's how that worked. It just gets dismissed if there's yeah. proof found. But I, I think that at that point, they were probably like, all right, if this kid is... Is trying to blackmail, he might be yeah, lying about the Yeah, probably set it thing. up about the yeah. whole charges. So he was able to get that to go away. So, and this kid, when he met, when he picked this kid up, he was posing as a police officer. Oh, my God. Yeah. He's got some balls on him now. Dog, he, he goes to extreme lengths to get his <clears> dick sucked. <laughs> When yeah, dude, right? when he was fucking trying to coerce kids into sucking his dick, he even went so far. There was a two thousand. <gasps> there was a, two, a a book in two thousand, written by a guy whose last name was Sullivan. I can't remember his first name, and I, I believe the name of the book was Killer Clown. And in the book, they talk about one of the extremes that he would go to to try to get kids to just let him do fucked up shit to him. Wow. And one of the things that one of the things that he would say to them was that he is commissioned to perform scientific experiments doing gay shit. Wow. By the government or, like, NASA? I don't know who he said sanctioned him. I'm going to have to suck your dick upside down to see if it works in space. <laughs> right, here's an astronaut ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> you suck on this while I suck on that. Dude, he would also, he would also try to man- manipulate them into sex while dressed like the clown. Sometimes sometimes he would fucking lose it, and you'll start to see that with the murders, too, where he would just handcuff people, he would choke them unconscious, and then just yeah. torture them. And then other times, he would just drop it. He would say that, like, oh, I was, that, that was a morality test, so I'm glad you didn't suck my dick as a clown, dude. Whoa. Because that would have been fucked wow. up. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Oh, my dude. God. That's so <clears throat> funny. He just flips a coin, and he's like, all right. This one I am gonna I am gonna bust, and then the next <laughs> one he's like I'm just gonna fuck this kid's head up. That's crazy. The cop thing's nuts too. It's like ah, oh, look at my badge, and then water squirts out. Like. <laughs> <laughs> at that point, you could have paid somebody to suck your dick for the price of the cop uniform <laughs> yeah, rental. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, rental. <laughs> all right, so now that those charges are dropped. He's like, all right, I need to do something a little bit different here. I need, I need to fucking change a few things up. So in 1971, he gets a house. The address is 8213 West Summerdale Avenue. It's in Norwood Park Township, which is a suburb of Chicago. It's northwest of Chicago. Moves in with his mom initially. He stays getting the pussy, though. So shortly thereafter, he meets another woman. This woman has two kids. And within six months, they're engaged. Hmm. And then when the mom at that point, she's like, all right, look, you got, you got another wife. You got two kids coming. You guys have the house, and I'll move out of here. Get out of town. Wow. Yeah. So he's got this house. And this ends, up, this ends up becoming the house where he starts fucking going ballistic. Yeah. Did she have the girl he was engaged to? Did she have any franchises under her belt? <laughs> 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 Wendy's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this was, was, this, was, this, was, this was Darlene Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me back back up a little bit. So before he got married, he he was working as a cook, wasn't making a ton of dough, but you know he was doing a good job. Whatever he did, mm-hmm. he started his own 
uh, construction business called PDM Construction. What do you think PDM stood for? Pogo does males. Ooh. That's actually pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I would have gone with playing too damn much. <laughs> yeah. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> now, he's a jack of all trades. So PDM stands for painting, decorating, and maintenance. Decorating is not usually involved with those other two. <laughs> well, you are when you're, when you're John Wayne Gates. Yeah. So he, he can tear it up with some decoration. Is he always a porker? Yeah. Ever since he was a little kid, he was. Yeah. Fine. Never was an in-shape, attractive no. guy. Uh, it's funny you mention this, though, because in an interview that I read today, uh, a journalist who got to visit him numerous times in prison was just asking him about his daily routine. And he's like, do you ever work out at all? He's like, why the fuck do I want to do that? He's like, I have strong legs and a tight ass. <laughs> like, all right, you make a good point, dude. It's back to the uh, nothing above the waist that, mentality. That, that happened during that conversation with that journalist, John. No shit. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Wow. You know that what the guy funny? was on to something. He wasn't too far off, man. So initially it starts off with, and he's able to convince his parole officer to allow him to spend more time doing PDM-related shit. Okay. So he, he does have to be on the clock as a cook for a certain amount of time. However, he's so good at what he does, and he's so convincing that eventually yeah. the parole officer's like, look, fucking Mazel Tov, knock it out of the park, go for it. Yeah. And before long, PDM is his full-time thing, and he's able to hire employees and shit like that. And then he quickly realized that if he presents job opportunities to fucking students, fucking – Ooh. High school kids looking for money, fucking kids out of college, yeah. fucking desperate kids at the Greyhound station. It's just like, all right, dude, do you want to fucking make five bucks an hour? Whereas you would, if you worked at fucking McDonald's, you might make two. Yeah. These young dudes are like, yeah, fuck, why, why not, dude? So this is where shit starts to go really fucked up for him. Yeah, he made himself his own fucking home roster of, of little... Teens, right? They're yeah. all kids, right? <laughs> yeah, dude, they're all like... Is he exclusively trying to get teenagers? No. Dude, there's... There was a kid, like, when people found out what he did, um, they kind of... They put out some information saying, like, look, if you're aware of where these people are or if you had any kind of encounter with Gacy, please let us know. Mm -hmm. And a guy who was raped in a department store when he was nine years old came to police and said like this this was this was years prior like this dude is an adult by this time and he's like um that's the guy who raped me and it was just a kid whose parents let him wander in a department store and gacy got him and he told him like he would kill him if he ended up telling so anybody he never so the kid never spoke it. of it Jesus. until it was revealed was that this up. motherfucker had 29 bodies oh, yeah. under his house but now, you know, he's got this company, he's crushing it, he's providing job opportunities for the for these young men, and he's got people coming in and out of there, and he's threatening them, he's having sex with a lot of them, some of them, like, he doesn't do anything to, but he's really just getting into some very fucked up shit now. This, mm -hmm. is, this is the house where everything starts to fucking take off. By the way, the house was recently on the market. Yeah, I saw a little Zillow, Zillow action yeah, that's on what your I had up on earlier. Zillow. It's a really cool looking house too. Really, it's, they changed the address. It was originally eighty two thirteen. It's now eighty two fifteen Somerdale. Okay, in Norwood Park Township, Illinois. Okay, it, it, kind of a affluent area. Or yeah, just like the house, suburb. I think the last house last sold for like four hundred and sixty nine thousand okay. dollars, and that was about two years ago. Okay, so. It was like a middle class neighborhood for Chicago, probably. Yeah. yeah. And one of the, one of the things that gave me the creeps too when I realized that that was the house. Initially, I looked at it just because it was the one closest to the original address, but then when I looked a little further, I saw that they just changed the address because that's mm -hmm. what they do sometimes with fucked up yeah, addresses. Yeah, that's just, what they uh, do with Sale Drive, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. And one of the fucked up things is they have a shot of the basement, and of it when, when no it was, now now. Okay. Oh, although, yes, there were. Dude, to that point, all right. So now that we're already talking about this house, I don't know, maybe we should save it. I, I want to get to the original murders first. Yeah, keep it in order. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now we're getting into 1972, commits his first murder. Okay. According to 30 him. 30 years old. 
Yes, 30 years old. According to Gacy, the way it unfolded was, follow, it was as follows. He picked the kid up at the Greyhound station, brought him back to the house. They had sex. Gacy fell asleep. He woke up and he says that this kid, um, Timothy... This kid, Timothy McCoy, was standing over him with a knife. A fight ensues. Gacy says he stabbed him in self-defense because this kid was standing over him with a knife. Yeah. By Gacy's own account, he says after he stabbed this kid to death, he went down to the kitchen and he saw that there was a bunch of breakfast shit out. I kind of believe this, that this might have been the case and this might have been how it happened, was that the the kid kid was was making making breakfast. breakfast. But isn't the family home? No, the wife would frequently go away. Okay, with um, the kids. With the kids. Okay. I don't know where she was for the first or second murder. So it was 72, 74, and 75 were the first murders. Okay. First and second one, I don't know where they were for the weekend, but for the last one in 75, John Wayne Gacy's mom broke her hip. So John Wayne Gacy's wife offered to go. She was, she was in a neighboring state, and she's like, look, I'll go take care of her. And John's like, yeah, why don't you go do that? I'll, I'll handle things. Mm-hmm. And at this point, like, the wife is starting to become suspicious of his activity because he'll disappear in the middle of the night. And apparently during his confession, he said that all of his murders would take place between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Wow. And people said they would hear shit constantly. Some people even called the police. But then they would come to the house, and cops would see that it's Gacy. would be like, oh, John, is everything all right? be yeah. like, yeah, dude, it's, I, I don't know. And he wouldn't even <laughs> go so far as to say that he was, I think after he got a second divorce, he would admit to the cops if they came that he was into, um, like, sadomasochism, and he was picking up dudes. Whoa. So, you know, they well, would you know buy what that. you know what he did with the first body? Um... You, like he said, of self defense, did he end up like? Did the cops come and disc- like? He, they did not. I think the first twenty nine, like, so he was eventually convicted of thirty three murders. Twenty six of them were found in the crawl space under his house. And how did he keep them from smelling like rotten corpses? He did not. It smelled fucking horrendous in that house. So and he's got two kids living there, dude. It's, it's I can't imagine how bad that it fucking smelled. So. He had tw- dude. He had twenty six of them in the crawl space. There's pictures of this. There, this fucking detective Whoa. from the the Splains Police Department. This guy, Aug Schweiso. When they announced what was going on, they're just like, "Look, we got fucking a lot of bones here. There's probably a lot more. Everybody, come if you can." Yeah. This guy was a detective with the Splains Police Department, which which um, suburb of Chicago. He shows up there. The guy, I don't know if he was actually tasked with taking pictures. I know he had an interest in photography, so he might have just been like, fuck it, I'm taking pictures of this shit. Yeah. He took, he, I, I'm getting chills like talking about it now because of how fucked up these pictures are. Jesus. You see inside of Gacy's house. So now it's like the, the first three murders are out of the way. So now getting into like all the, from 76 to 78, second wife leaves him because he admits to her, I'm jumping around a little bit, I apologize. Wife leaves him in 76 because he admits to her that he's bisexual. And okay. she questioned him because she found gay porn under the sink. But that's all? Like nothing body Dude, or murder no. related? Nope. Wait, what, and what is uh, the form of porn in that era, especially with that first kid he brought over um, and sodomized him? Like, were they, what is, the, how are you watching that on a television? I think, or was it, just looking I, at I think a it was like literary porn. Okay. Um, and to that point, though, I'll, I'll get to that later because there's a, another aspect to that I, I don't want to talk about yet. But 76, the wife leaves, and at this point, he's fucking tearing it up. So he's just killing dudes left and right. And a number of these dudes work for his company. So eventually it starts, Jesus. like, people start, like, asking questions, like, where the fuck is so-and-so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's showing up to work. He's like, where the fuck? Nobody's doing shit around here. <laughs> so now, But it takes, dude, it's fucking two years before anybody starts to piece together, like, Oh, wait, there, there's like a bunch of dudes from fucking PDM contracting or PD, PDM construction just just fell off the fucking face of the earth. Yeah. And I don't know what it is about the 70s, but people were just fucking morons back then, too. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it I seem mean, like that? That's where it seems like every serial killer was from. Right. That era. And I think just because people were so retarded and unsuspecting. Is this pre-DNA testing? Yeah. Yeah. So I think a big reason why 
the police appeal to the public when they found all these bodies. So inevitably they find they find there's 33 murders that he gets pinched for. And finally when the last victim was this guy Robert Piest, he was at a drugstore. And Gacy just happened to be in there. Gacy Gacy was doing action, actual construction business in this drugstore. It uh-huh. was like the Nissan Pharmacy. He's in there. He's talking to the owner, talking about doing like drywall or some shit. Sees this 15-year-old kid that he finds attractive and strikes up a conversation with the kid. And he's asking him how much he makes there. And the kid's like $2 and something. He's like, how would you like to make double that working yeah. for me? The kid comes over. He fucking tortures the kid, fucking rapes him and kills him. God damn at that point, um, that kid's family, this, it was super fucked up because it was that kid's mom's birthday that night. And it was like 9 o'clock where he's like, I'm just going to go talk to this guy who came to me, wants me to work for his construction okay. company. So she knows where he's going. Yeah, yeah. he went to me. Yeah, going to meet Gacy. PDM. This is like 9 o'clock where this kid says this. They're about to have cake for the mom for her birthday. And he's like, I promise you I'll be right back. Short, by 10 o'clock, this kid was dead. Jesus, man. So he goes over there. Gacy kills him. And then shortly thereafter, like questions start getting asked and shit starts adding up. It gets to the point where in early December 1978, police are becoming more and more suspicious. They don't have any evidence to tie him to any of these disappearances. But they kind of know that, like, all right, like, all signs are pointing yeah. to you being the reason why all these fucking kids are missing. How many is it at this point? Is at it up to point, 33? Yeah, it's, it's, it's up to 33. They, ha- they have no idea it's that number yet. However, right, right, right. there's a bunch. I think what brought police to him was just the ones related to his company. However many that was. Well, was that, do you know if that kid, uh, the 7-Eleven kid, was the last one? He was, that, yeah, he was the last person confirmed. that he murdered. Okay. Dude, and by this point, his, his fucking, he couldn't put any more bodies on his property. Oh, the first kid where he was buried was in the garage. What happened was he was buried gonna, in the garage? Dude, he was, he had an area of the garage dug up because he was putting some kind of pipe in there because they had problems with flooding. Mm-hmm. And the crawl space would routinely flood. And then the area where under the garage they were supposed to put in, they might have been putting in a sump pump or something. So that was already dug out. And he killed this kid. He had the kid in the attic. I think the first kid was in the attic, and then he was just like, all right, fuck it. I got this hole in the garage. I'm going to put him in the garage. So he buries him in there. He fucking pours concrete over that. So nobody oh, has shit. any idea yeah, that's happening. Yeah, yeah. That's not going to stink. No. But after that, there was like, all right, there was the garage, there was one in the driveway. One in the backyard. I think that, all right, so that's three. And then tw- 26 under the crawl space. It's not a big fucking house. Like, when you look at the property yeah, is the now. Is the property big enough? Like, why do you need more outside? Dude, when they found these fucking bodies, John, a number of the bodies, like, when they found a foot, it was often touching the skull of another body. Damn. So it was, just, and he actually, he gave them a detailed map. He drew it all out. He remembered where he buried all these fucking bodies. It gets it gets even fucking wilder after he gives them all this. So anyway, going back to the last victim, Robert Piest, police start police start following him. They're working in um, two two separate shifts of two detectives. So one set of two cops will work for twelve hours, and the other the other two cops will come on for the next twelve hours. Again, going back to fucking the fucking stupidity of the 70s, the cops would regularly hang out with him while they're tailing him. He would invite them in for dinner. They would take him in up for that. He would invite them to come hang out at the fucking tiki bar. They would come. They would fucking shoot pool. If he was going out to eat, this was this was like a week, maybe two weeks this was going on. And they, they, they would go to restaurants with him. If they're they, in the fucking house dog, and they don't they smell were, this shit? Well, inevitably they do. That there's It faintly smells of that but then there's something that happens which leads them to believe, like, all right, there's definitely dead bodies here. So the cops are fucking... This reminded me so much of OJ and having the cops hanging out yeah, the pool. Yeah, yeah, Like, what is about cops and recreation where they throw all <laughs> yeah. professionalism out the window dude, the second... give them a fucking Fuddruckers and a yeah, ping pong dude. table. And oh, like, my God, man. If, let it, you get away with anything. Dude, you, you could cut your family's heads off as long as you got a Miss Pac-Man machine in the basement. <laughs> so there's these... 
these four fucking detectives are rotating out. They're following him. And as as the week progresses, like he starts to become suspicious. Like he starts to recognize like, oh fuck. Like they're on to me. I'm not gonna get away with this. Yeah. He contacts a lawyer and he inet- he eventually tells the lawyer like what he did. Damn, straight up. Yeah, he straight up fucking tells him. And then one night when he's got two of the cops over for dinner, one cop goes to use the bathroom, the heat kicks on, and they smell it. That does it. Now, this whole time, like, these fucking 26 bodies under the house, he had just been, not only him, but another kid from his construction company had been um, digging the graves and also... Whoa, we had an accomplice this whole time? I don't think this kid ended up getting charged with anything because he he tried to rape this kid as well. Yeah, I mean, this kid's name was uh, fear Rossi. For your life yeah. at that point. Yeah. yeah, so he was threatening this kid constantly, and also, God knows what the fuck else was going on. So this kid helped dig the graves, and then he was also carrying down these fucking fifty pound bags of lime to cover whatever they recently just dug up or, or buried to try to kill the smell. Yeah, it. By all accounts, it, it hardly did anything. Mm-hmm. And then he would also, in some spaces, like, he tried to, like, uh, cover it with concrete. Yeah. I don't know if he covered the whole crawl space with concrete, but I know he would try to do that to cover up the smell. But once that happened, they figured they had enough to say, like, okay, can we get a warrant now? Because I, I think this, what we're smelling is the kid that we're looking for. Mm-hmm. So as the warrant's being fucking drawn up, Gacy leaves the house. They follow him to a gas station. They watch him sell weed to a gas station attendant. He was selling Dog, he was fucked. He was trapping. The JC is wild. He is. <laughs> wow. So they got him for that. They're like, all right, we got to at least fucking get him for this. And they didn't immediately arrest him. They see him as the day progresses. Like, smoke a couple joints with him. <laughs> fucking hit the 7-Eleven for some slurpees. Like a Slim Jim. <laughs> but, dude, they, they fucking see him deteriorating because as the days have progressed during this past week, He's just not sleeping. And he's just fucking losing his mind because yeah. he knows it's all going to come are to an end. In. Finally, they contact him that night and they say, like, look, John, uh, we need you to turn yourself in. Can you come in and talk to us? How quickly can you get here? It's like, I could be there in a half hour. Half hour goes by, hour goes by, two, three, four hours goes by before he finally turns up. Oh, they think, They think he's pulling an OJ... And he's on, like, a fucking high-speed chase, or he yeah. fucking ditched the fucking detail or whatever. He wasn't. It turns out he was getting rid of the body of the kid that they were looking for, Robert Piest. He had to take him, because there was no more room on his property, he took him to the Desplaines River, where he had disposed of the previous, at least three other bodies. He says four. And he was dumping the, he was dumping the body in the river. But the reason why it took him so long to get to the police station was because he got caught in snow. Wow. Yeah, so his, his car his car got stuck in yeah. snow, and he came in. He was covered in mud. And he's like, "All right," he's like, "Yeah, I did this shit." <laughs> and this is actually kind of funny too. He says when he started, why is he going through all that effort to get rid of that last body and I then just know. go in and fucking admit it? I I think he probably just had a moment. I think the fucking getting caught in the snow might have been the the fucking straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. He was just, oh. Fuck yeah. this! I'm so fucking tired. I just want to go sleep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just you guys go aren't going to believe the day I had. <laughs> <laughs> but he goes in. Apparently, he tells them all of this. He says, "Look, I killed fucking. There's 29 people on my property, and I dumped five in the Desplaines River. They only found four. He seems to think that um, when he dumped one of the bodies over the bridge." Rather than fall into the water, it fell into a passing barge. Whoa. Oh, it's so, a giant fucking yeah. Delaware River kind of river. Yeah, so they, they never found one of the bodies that he admitted to. Hmm. So he was eventually charged with the 29 bodies that were found on his property in addition to the four that they got out of the river. Yeah. So as he's supposedly telling them about this, I say supposedly because there's no fucking record of his confession. What? There's no record of it. They didn't record it. They didn't have him write anything down. This is all apparently dictated to the police that night. 
Jesus Christ, they really played it loosey goosey with this Dog, guy. There's even to this day, like he he says that he's innocent. He wrote a manuscript. Yeah, I thought you said he this had a seems manuscript. Seems like foul play. Yeah. He wrote a manuscript, and he said he ref- in the manuscript he refers to himself as the thirty fourth victim. Oh, oh my that's God. Yeah, he said that. And they're They'll like, play F-O-W-L-K-F-C. <laughs> 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 and as like as like he's being questioned about this, he's like, I don't know how the bodies got there. There's 12 people that have a key to my house. <laughs> wow. I don't that's know why I've been buying so much sackcrete at the Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> have you asked Pogo? <laughs> Should we do a switchover? I don't know if I have enough more to do like a whole episode, but I'm so confused. So where, where did the clown come in? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I feel like we didn't even cover the clown thing, right? Because that's what he's most famous for. I mean, besides from all the murder. Yeah, we didn't (laughs) do much patches pogo talk. Yeah, like was he doing like? So when he like, I would think that the first time he goes to jail. Like his clown days, his birthday parties are over. Like, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you come out of jail, you're not getting hired like, again. How do you get back into that scene? Well, I'll tell you what. Do you guys want to do that? Um, maybe if you guys have time next week, we'll do a whole hour of just on the clown shit. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm positive that I could find an hour's worth of clown. Yeah. Yeah, man. So we'll finish up this one with the murders and then what he, his explanation for them. And he went to trial, right? He did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, so he admit he supposedly admits to all these because, like I said, there's no record that he actually confessed. Yeah, I believe the police when they say like he actually confessed because you know they found fucking thirty three bodies that. What about that account to the journalists about um, the boys? Wasn't he kind of admitting it then? What boys? The one journalist account. Uh, I forget what it was specifically, but I. F- Felt like it was a um, a tell-all interview, like before he got put to death, that he was admitting it. He um, never actually admitted anything. He did, no, he never publicly. The one murder that he admitted to was the first one, but he claims it was self-defense. Okay, that's the all knife, he ever the knife thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the only one that he ever copped to. Huh. However, I believe the cops when they say that like he admitted to him when he came in for questioning. Did he even drew the fucking? The, the fucking schematic for them to right. follow yeah. to unearth these bodies. And going back to a detective that I had mentioned earlier, this guy, um, Og Schwiso, he took these fucking pictures, dude. You could you could find them. Uh, maybe I'll put a link for it when we post this on YouTube on, in the description. But Oh, he found the under crawl space photos? He took, well, he took them. Oh, he took them, yeah. Yeah, so he went there. And the way that neighbors described like gradually finding out what was happening because no nobody like nobody would have thought that like okay there's definitely there's fucking close to 30 bodies right under this fucking house yeah. but um this guy the guy Oxwiso had said that um when they initially started the excavation they just had a bunch of 5 gallon buckets and they were just scooping out dirt and he said that they were just using the driveway to dump the dirt and he said, with each fucking bucket full of dirt, the skull. smell became oh, God. more prominent, more pronounced. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe he did that good of a job of hiding the smell. Like, you would think John, that the neighborhood would know. Dude, there's so... Gacy... Fucking 30 bodies. Dude, there's so much fucked up shit. Again, like, the, you read this shit and you watch this shit and you think, all right, how could nobody have known about this? Right. But when you... Gacy memorabilia is, is pretty hot. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? There's so much shit related to him. Now we're gonna get into this. We're gonna we're gonna do a subsequent episode that's relative to just the clown stuff related clown to episode. John Wayne Gacy, a clown episode, <laughs> because we barely touched on it in this one. Yeah, he became a prolific artist, primarily in prison. Like I don't know what he was creating before he went to prison, but when he went to prison, he went fucking ape shit with painting. This guy did more in 18 fucking months. I'm going to do it in my goddamn life. I'm telling you, it was the divorces. Once he was free, he was fucking <laughs> killing it. But, dude, when he... In regards to the memorabilia, one of the things that I saw that somebody had bought was pretty fucking cool. And if I had the money for it and it was for sale, I would definitely buy it. But it was the crawl space entrance. 
Like, Gacy was a big fucking dude. Like, he weighed 230 pounds. How did... I don't know. This fucking shit get on sale? I, I don't know. That's fucking crazy. Do you know how tall he was? 5'9". Five 5'9 nine. Five nine and 230, so he's a thick dude. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's a little Winnie, Winnie the Pooh ass yeah. trying to fucking hide <laughs> bodies in there. Just wearing a, a PDM shirt and nothing underneath. He's getting stuck. You gotta get yeah. honey. Yeah. <laughs> Sucking off Christopher Throbin. <laughs> <laughs> the original dead boner that he found. <laughs> but going back to these pictures, dude, um, I'm going to put the link to that in this when we post this to YouTube. But the pictures are fucking captivating. And he was a stinker for a lot of different reasons. But one of the things, legitimate laugh out loud, was in the midst of these horrific pictures where you see these fucking putrefied remains being unearthed. Is it's, it like partially skeleton? Yeah. F- dude, it, like some of the shit looks like soup. Oh my it's God. It's fucked, dude. dude. But there's something that, that it took me a while to catch my breath because of how hard I was laughing. I'm going to show you guys, but then for those of you watching and listening to this, I'll put the link in the YouTube description so you can go to the link on your own and see it up close. So in Gacy's dining room, he had a framed picture of himself on the wall in his KFC dress blues. <laughs> and underneath, he had an award that he gave to himself, which was Asshole of the Year for 1974 to 1978. Dude, this guy fucking rules. The great thing about that is... Oh my he, God, he really does have the Colonel tie he, on. I'm telling you, dude. The great thing about that, giving himself asshole of the year from 74 <laughs> to 78, is he started committing murders in 72. Why didn't he get it that year, too? <laughs> oh, man. Dude. That but, is I don't know, maybe it awesome. speaks to his claim that maybe that one was self-defense. Wow, yeah. dude, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. that's what I was just going to say. Yep. <laughs> Look at the butt. It looks like a tooth, like he just dude. modified a, to- a dentist's uh, <laughs> award. <laughs> like an ad- yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't wait for people to see this. This wallpaper rules, though. His whole house is just super fucked up, and it looks like the house that a clown murderer would live in. Yeah, that wallpaper definitely fits the bill. And, dude, when they're digging this shit up... Yeah, did they knock down the house, or is it still the original structure? No, they did. They they redid the house. The house that's up there now, it kind of looks like a mountain house. Mm -hmm. Um, It's cool, and it's like... A-frame? Yeah, it's like there's like a really cool like loft area at the the top... Um, it, it looks it, it, it's big because like yeah. there was a significant amount of property, but it was just a small rancher that he lived in. Right, and it was all this space, a huge backyard, huge driveway. They had a garage. That's what John. That's what they yeah, that, that's the house now. Oh, that's a fucking nice suburban house. But he was convicted and he was sentenced to death. And in 1994, he was executed by lethal injection. Oh, he was killed in the 90s. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he was on death row for like f- fucking fifteen years. I think he was. Yeah, I think he was convicted in eighty. Dude, he could have had a surge. Huh? He could have drank a surge on his way out. <laughs> <laughs> surge. <laughs> uh, was that just like through all the appeal processes that it took so long? Probably because he was litigious. Yeah. There was a place. The business still exists, although they're changing buildings. There's a place called the Museum of Death. There's one in New Orleans, <laughs> and there was one in Hollywood. Okay. It, it, the location was on Hollywood Boulevard, but I think because of the pandemic, they had to shut down. It's probably been overrun with homeless people in tents. I wouldn't doubt it, dude. I think Hollywood's in a fucking... looks like shit right now. They announced this week, though, John, that they're going to be reopening w- in the area where it used to be. And it's okay. a shame because the Museum of Death... The actual physical structure of this museum was very fucking cool. Yeah. So it's a bummer that they're not there. But one of the really cool aspects of it, aside from the exhibits that they have, they have some really fucked up pictures. Um, The very first room that you walk into, it's like 90% documents. You could hang out in this room all fucking day without Dude. going through the rest of the fucking museum. Are you allowed to look through them or is they're all just on Everything. the wall? Everything. John, it's, it's set up so it's like, you know how like when you look through baseball cards that are valuable, it's in like sheets? Yeah, yeah. It's like That's that. how the documents are. Laminated in a yep. binder. Uh, there so you was, can just fucking pick one up, take a seat, and just skim through it? I don't know how they obtain these things, but it's like very like 
weird shit that like you almost feel like guilty that you're looking at because it might not be yeah. legal that they have them. Um, like the one thing, yeah, that's like hair that's sample. Yes. <laughs> the one, <laughs> the one thing that I remember looking at was this um this prison intake form for the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez. Oh yeah, and it's his handwriting too. And you're looking at you're reading it, and he's a little stinker too, man. They yeah. ask him, and one of the questions they ask in the intake form is like, "Do you have any special skills that we should be aware of?" And he writes, "Slicing and dicing and spicing up rump roast." <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> And juggling. <laughs> <laughs> but to that point, and why I brought that up was, in that room, they have a lot of cease and desist <gasps> orders that John Wayne Gacy had sent out, hmm. because, threatening to sue people who were trying to sell his artwork without his permission. While he was in jail. That's a big part of how he passed time in jail, is threatening and actually suing people is, for selling his shit without his permission. Jesus Christ. Wow. Man. I think he's innocent. That's so pe- weird I that mean, 12 never... people had a key. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been anybody. I'd rather be led in by 12 than carried by six. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, he's just like, uh, I'm a deep sleeper. Anyone could have put placed 30 dead bodies in my fucking house. <laughs> yeah. Man, that guy was a stinker. He that was, dude. Great, the, art, the art thing is fu- very funny. Dude. Like... Just going after people from jail. Yep. About fucking copyright law or whatever. Jesus Dude, Christ. Dude, and he created a lot of it too. It's like, but where was all this art being obtained from? He, I think he would just send it to people who communicated with him. Okay, okay. He was very then, strange. Like it was. How did he ever find out that they were trying to make money off of it? I don't know, man. I, I think people just trying to ingratiate themselves to him would say like, "Hey, just so you're aware." There's a fucking convention, and this is the guy that's doing it. Yeah. I can wow. picture that being how that unfolds. I mean, that's the only thing I could possibly think of that would... And, dude, I, I think his... Possibly make sense. I think part of what just fucking got him off was, like, building these relationships and demonstrating to people how capable he was at shit. Yeah. I'd never expected him to be such, like, a, uh, a charismatic go-getter. He, you know? He crushed it in everything he did, but it just seemed like... He was never able, he never had, like, friends or anything like that. He had a lot mm. of people around him, but it was always just because, like, he was a leader in whatever he was taking part in. Yeah. So there were always people around, but. Um, I can't be sure that he was giving an honest go at making friends, you know, out at <laughs> yeah. bars. I think he had other <laughs> shit going on. Was his dad alive when, uh, when, when he was caught? No, his you know? dad had died while he was in prison. Okay. Uh, the first time or after the first, he, yeah, when, when he was in prison the for the sexual stint. assault of um, Donald Voorhees, yeah, he was. And in that's there. when you said he started painting. I don't then, know. I don't know when he started, but when the second, the real jail time, he was. Oh yeah, when he was art. in for the murders, yeah. like that's. I think what that was his. Yeah, most prolific uh, artist period. Uh, a couple other things I want to hit real quick, but. Um, I guess we could save this for the clown episode because these are two really fucking funny things relative to clown stuff. Yeah. I guess we could leave it for that. Can I just say real quick? I mean, you started talking about this museum of death. Yeah. That is the dream job for you. Yeah, yeah. You could be a curator and franchisee of the third location here. Yeah. Like, you know. Jake, that means a lot to me. Thank you for saying that. Dude, I'm I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of messed up stuff in Philadelphia mm. where you could capitalize and, yeah. and uh, you know, do something with this because, yeah, I mean, you, you get, so, in, a, in, a, in a non-weird way, you get so much joy from talking about this stuff <laughs> that the yeah. passion really comes through. And oh, cool. Thank you. Can, you. You can make it a really exciting thing. So Thank you, man. If you get rich off this, I just, you know, give me like 2%. That's a, <laughs> oh, thank you, boss. Yeah, that would be the equivalent of me getting to actually manage a fast food franchise. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming in and cleaning shop. Dude, yeah. what, what if I killed my family and remarried the woman who uh, whose family owned the Museums of Death? <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to Museum of Death school. Her dad gives me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I became the kill mill. <laughs> death, death school is just you put on eyeliner and walk through a graveyard at night. <laughs> you made it. You did it all night. We got to take a field trip to to one of the museums of death because I've never been to the one in in New Orleans, but the one in fucking L.A. 
was so fucking cool. It's not like anything like wild or anything like that. It's just somebody or some people that clearly care a lot about what they do. That's a good thing because I wouldn't expect that. From yeah. a place like that, especially on Hollywood Boulevard, you know, it's it, like yeah, dude, it, it's anyone would get hired there, you know. It's not like that when you go in there. It has a def- they really do a great job with the layout because you almost feel like you're suffocating at one point. Um, you get as you go through, the space becomes more and more narrow, and you can only get out one way. That's very creepy. It's fucked up. Yeah, and it's dude. It's it's so. It takes a lot to, like, fucking make me uneasy, but the Museum of Death in L.A., it was, like, because of that setup, I was, like, this this is great, and I'm scared to death right now. Yeah, was it done on purpose like that done. way, or was it I, just... I would have to believe so. Or did okay. they slowly run out of materials? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that could have been the case, too. But one of the great things about it is when you go in there, no matter who, no matter who is working at the, the front desk, as soon as you walk in, you're in the gift shop. And no matter who's there, they're super friendly, I can't remember exactly what the guy said as we were leaving, but of something related to enjoying the death exhibits, but also making the most of your life. And it was very inspirational. And it was the perfect thing to end that kind of experience on. Yeah. Do you think that was his own tidbit or do you think that's in, in the training? The it's, it's pro- yeah, it's probably in the, the uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely in the handbook. Dude, I would have all my gift bags be evidence bags. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that'd be oh. damn. We're gonna talk about this idea a little bit more after this. Yeah. Oh, no doubt, man. But yeah, when they get that fucking bitch up and running again, I would love to go back there. There's so much fucking cool shit. There's, they have a Heaven's Gate exhibit where they have bunk beds set up, and the bodies are replicas of the bodies that were found from the Heaven's Gate members. Oh, they got the man. Nikes on, and it's as though you're looking into a bedroom. And you're looking at the bunk beds, and you're looking at the bodies. Their faces are covered with like, I think it's like a like a purple handkerchief. Uh-huh. And there's like a television in the bedroom that's playing. What the fuck was that guy's name? Um, the the creepy old dude. It's not yeah. Warren Jeffs. That's a that's a different guy. Vincent Price. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I don't think I know it. But do you know who I'm talking about? It's the leader the of creepy the... creepy old guy, the yeah, Heaven's yeah. Gate guy. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, not Vincent Price. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it might be Vincent Price. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's the guy who picked out all the Nikes. <laughs> <laughs> but he's uh, th- there's just so much cool shit. There's Oh, there's an incredible Manson room. <laughs> Wait, there's multiple rooms? <laughs> Dog, it's... I thought you said the whole thing was like a hallway that got smaller. <laughs> no, it's like it's like you're walking through a maze. And it's broken up in the rooms. Like, you go through that one documentation room, and then I th- I forget what the second room is, but the third room is, like, I don't know if it's entirely, like, child death. It's yeah. That's that's the most unsettling room out of the whole mm-hmm. place because there's, like, kid coffins and shit like that. I think there's a room like that in the Muter Museum. Okay. Like, all child body parts. From I've never been there. Freaky anomalies. It's... Weird. Yeah. I don't think it's like yeah, it's I would. Pretty... I would like to go there. It's Have same you, level. You've never been there. I've never been there. No. Oh man, I gotta take you there. I, would, I made the I mistake like of going there. I took my wife on a date there, and that was a big mistake because we went. We had a big lunch. Oh and my god! And then we god, went to dude. the, the <laughs> Metal Museum. We at were like walking around like fucking <laughs> fetuses, <laughs> and then we just like walked out like ten minutes later. But it was really cool. A lot of cool stuff. Yeah, there. there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Uh Went there with Kyle Kinane. What? Yeah. Wow. Name drop. Edit that out. I saw nope, like a nope, fucking nope. dickhead. It's the name of the episode. God <laughs> damn it. I quit. <laughs> Three beers and I fucking... Was he into it, John? Yeah, I think it was like his idea. He had been there before. And uh, he like, got us all like a personal tour kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was cool. Like I could definitely spend a couple hours in there looking at all the shit. Oh, dude, they got, they got us, like, back uh, in, like, the non-display room. Like, the shit that might in, be on display in the future. Damn, so they took you from the Mudder Museum to the Muddest Museum? <laughs> <laughs> what? I think they showed us a fucking, like, elephantitis penis kind of thing. Did they put it on your shoulders and leave? <laughs> <laughs> like, this? Like, a, like a python yeah. and they just take a picture with it? Yeah, to do that, you have to drink the whole thing of formaldehyde. <laughs> I got close. <laughs> you get a free t-shirt and a picture goes on the wall. 
Can't believe I drank the whole thing. <laughs> oh, dude, in the Manson room at the Museum of Death, um, the whole thing's fucking cool to begin with. But as you approach the room, you hear audio of the Manson girl singing. Oh, my God. That Ooh. would fucking creep it's the fucked shit up. out of me. Wait, dude, it gets even worse. Or better. But as you go into this room, there's a quilt on the wall that you can actually feel that was made by the Manson family. Oh, yeah, it's so fucking it? cool. Yep. Why would they let anybody touch that? I don't know. It feels like it would just deteriorate over the years from everyone's yeah. fingerprints. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the oil on yeah. the... Yeah. Well, we got to go touch it before it's too <laughs> yeah, late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely want to do a fucking revisit to this episode and just devote it entirely to... John Wayne Gacy clown shit. Be clowning. Dog, dog you know we're going to be clowning. Duke Gacy be clowning. So we'll figure out what we're, where we're going to place that, but we will do uh, a revisit to this episode yeah. just to discuss entirely clown shit related to John Wayne Gacy. Yeah, I feel like... We barely touched on it. Yeah. Here. Yeah, I mean, at this point, I can't even tell Pogo some patches, you know? <laughs> I don't know enough about the guy. <laughs> It's an expression we need to keep going <laughs> yeah. on the podcast. Damn, I wonder what Patches stood for. If, if Pogo is Polish and on the go. Polish on the go. Patches. Of the patches of dirt underneath this. Yeah. <laughs> pissed about the children. <laughs> I, I fucked. <laughs> uh, pissed about the children. Wait, was he? So, yeah, at least tell me this. Was the... Uh, five year murder period Like the height Of his clown career Cause I feel like He was doing the Construction business This whole time Doug that's a great question That is something That I will have an answer for Okay When we do the clown Ooh, episode I can't wait for this next Dude yeah, it's yeah. so rich Because there's so Yeah there's so much That I have questions He's about got so that. much That he was involved in That I, I honestly I don't know how He had time One I don't know how the fuck You have time To dig this much And to bury this much Yeah But dude I got to show you pictures of this fucking crawl space. I don't know how the fuck he got down there. Not only fitting in there, but putting another man down there. Right. Dragging yeah. it across to wherever you fucking had to drag yeah, it to. How do you even do and that? then you go in first and then pull it 12, in. 12 keys. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why the defense didn't just dwell on that. Right? Yeah. Dude, that would be like a good clue sequel. Dude, each, each juror, I would go up and just hand them a key. Mm-hmm. Like... One of you could have done this. <laughs> damn. Like, damn. 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 Reasonable, da- reasonable doubt, man. Let's take that motherfucker up. Give him a fair shot with <laughs> you at the lead. Put Jake at the helm. <laughs> That's what I wanted to defend dead murderers. <laughs> yeah, I'm not He's sure. He's just drinking at his grave. <laughs> like pouring some out for him. <laughs> I do the whole defense of clown makeup. <laughs> Just wearing dress shoes that are four sizes too big. <laughs> Your Honor, may I approach the bench? Squeak, 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 squeak. You're reading a newspaper, getting them shined as the yeah, judge yeah. passes you. You're like, Judge, Judge, may I have a moment? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know what? You think like the neighborhood had to have been aware of him being a clown because there are pictures of him standing outside of his house as the clown. Right, right. Was that something he hid? No, he was open about it. But do you think like as there's there's 29 bodies being taken dude. out of a small rancher. Do you think it's like like uh, they're thinking like, all right, John, clown car, we get it, dude. Like, all right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, all right, we we people are dead. All dude, right, that's a God. lot of stuff to hide too. Being a clown, being bisexual, and being a murderer. That's a lot of secrets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the yeah, 11 yeah. herbs and spices. <laughs> those are a lot of secrets. You know, Jake. Yeah, so I, he had to clown publicly. <laughs> when I found out that like he was ashamed of being gay. Dude. And his his dad was ashamed of him being gay, and he felt bad because of it. I would have just led with coming out to my dad as a clown. <laughs> and when you see how horrified your father is at your clown, be like, "All right, let's meet in the middle. I'll be gay, yeah. but I'll leave the clown stuff <laughs> behind." But you just see your dad I'll, get sad. I'll do you're gay like, for you, but I will be gay. Yeah, you're like, you're like "All right, dad, I, I see that you're sad. I know what'll turn you around. <laughs> just blowing up a balloon and makes a dog. <laughs> or as the dad's crying, you give him the handkerchief that never ends." <laughs> <laughs> yeah there were um i could talk about this more in the fucking clown episode but there was it was like the chicago metropolitan clown union that made an official statement after the bodies were oh discovered my God. It's something no one asked for yes <laughs> <laughs> putting their fucking little fucking greedy nose in it like oh we have a statement 
they they basically just wanted to tell people like, look, um, we're not all fucking <laughs> serial killers. <laughs> yeah. Most of us just want to get drunk in our cars, then have you pay us to come hang out around your kids for the afternoon. One uh, follow up question: yeah. um, Did John Wayne Gacy have a dog? No. Okay, never mind. I was wondering if the dog wrote a book about this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, just OJ's. No. <laughs> That'd be great. OJ's dog just has a whole series on serial killers. <laughs> it's funny you bring up the dog, though, because when, when police were investigating the final murder of one, the last victim, Robert P. Est, they had a cadaver dog come out. And they let him get in the Gacy's car because Gacy consented to having the police search the car. Mm -hmm. They let the cadaver dog get in the car. I don't know what the movement is or what the motion is, but the dog got in the front seat where Gacy eventually admitted that Robert P.S. body was placed. And the dog positioned his body to indicate that whoever they were looking for was dead and was in that seat at one point. Wow. I would love to see a dog mime that. (laughs) Yeah. That's like, got to be tough, though. If, like, you're a dog and, like, your back itches, so, like, you make the movement yeah, inadvertently. Yeah. You're like, uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but if you <laughs> could just... Legs. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, if those cops were... You go. <laughs> See the dog just sniff the seat, then turns towards the detective and just shake his head, like... <laughs> 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 if those cops <laughs> were really... Cl- <laughs> <laughs> the dude... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if those cops were really cool, they would have fucking pulled up a Volkswagen Beetle to the front of the ha- wherever they were pulling the bodies out of and brought each one through the car. <laughs> Dude, I wonder if like any of his clown homeboys just like showed up to like hang out that day. <laughs> Hey, I got those 26 pies, you asshole. (laughs) (laughs) The motherfucker was clowning. That's a tough gig, man. I I would like to find out what what murder houses are still standing from the state in which they were discovered. Right, right, right. Like they weren't. Nobody fucked with it. Nobody knocked it down. Nobody thought of remodeling it. Also, could you imagine being one of his customers in the construction business? And, like, there's a project, like, half finished. And you're just like, hey, so. Yeah. <laughs> About my deposit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you pretend you're going to show up as a character uh, witness, and you're just like, can I just get my 2000 back? <laughs> the news goes to interview you. You're like, yeah. And guess what? He didn't even get a permit for this. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen and I shut us down. Oh, man. It's got to be great. If, like, you're, like, the last person to leave, a, leave him a good review on Angie's list. <laughs> Then the next day, all the bodies are found. Can't say enough about John Wayne. (laughs) Rest in piss, you fucking... You genius. (laughs) (laughs) You you charismatic angel. Happy birthday in hell, you piece of shit. (laughs) I can't get over the fucking... I will have nightmares of... Blueprints of a mini golf course <laughs> in a jail. Maybe that's what he gave the cops by accident. They're just like, all right, can you give us a drawing to let us know what we're up against? No, but I can show you this. Yeah. Yeah. 18 months I got this done in. Well, yeah. The windmill took two months alone. Oh, dude, that would be cool if like it was the it was the Gacy crawl space course where you had to go in like on your knees. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you hit the ball through the crawl space. <laughs> Just got to get into an eye socket. <laughs> uh, it just drops down, goes out somebody's uh, pelvis. Uh, well, somebody asked him if he had ever considered hiding bodies in the attic because he just ran out of space on his property. He's like, I considered it, but then I was worried about leakage because he, he would place bodies up there basically as like a holding area. But one of the bodies had started to decompose. It leaked through so the ceiling. He move it. When the mom and yeah, 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 but dude, he would. Um, it had leaked through to the point where it had ruined a section of carpet, and he was furious that this section of carpet had gotten fucked up. And that was why he was like, I'll never put another body in the attic again. Is it just like it was leaking through a fucking drywall ceiling or drop ceiling or whatever it is? And then it's just like 
body goo, or is he putting something on it that would make it decompose? I don't think any of the attic bodies had any kind of preservative. And lime. I always thought that was not to cover the smell. I thought that, like, made a body decompose. It, I think it accentu- accentuates the decomposition process. Uh-huh. And people that were in that house said that you could smell it as soon as you went in. Even when there, when the first body, I think it was, the one where he covered in concrete in the garage. Yeah. Um, apparently, you could smell it, but it, it just wasn't as severe. Really? So even, even that, concrete. even just covering concrete, yeah. like you could still smell the body decomposing at that point. As a shitty uh, mortar. Have you ever smelled a dead body? No, I don't, I don't want so. to. I have not I either. Smell a dead mouse. That fucking reeks. Yeah, yeah. Dead rodent in the wall. I have yeah. smelled. Probably mice. Uh, that can fill up a room. Yeah, it's fucking bad. So I can't imagine the smell of a fucking decomposing no. corpse. We gotta get. We gotta see if we can maybe get Uncle Ron, <laughs> Uncle Ron, to make a, a death candle. <laughs> oh, boys, that was fun. Like I said, guys, we're gonna do a part two to this, which focuses entirely on clowning around, because we barely touched on it in this episode. Yeah, I need to know a lot. I did learn a lot. Me too. Thanks yeah. again for teaching me all so, that. I'm I'm happy to go into this shit. I always like. I always struggle with dates, so that's one thing I'm going to get better at as we go along. It's just nailing down dates. I don't know why that's always my uh, my first question too. It's like, what date did he fucking? Yeah, it helps my. (laughs) I feel like I have a visual timeline in my head when you're going through this stuff. So it's like, what moon was it? (laughs) (laughs) And that was a waxing gibbous. That does actually make sense. (laughs) So yeah, we're gonna have a Patreon. Yep. Right. I think I think that might actually be a good first Patreon episode, which yeah. is the companion to this one. Yeah. Which is all Gacy clown shit. And well, we'll I don't know. Take them to clown Dollar five town. dollars. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Whatever you guys. Yeah. I, I think whatever. But we gonna pay. fucking get wild on a Patreon. Dude, we might show our buttholes. Yo. So get ready for that. Dude, we might need to uh, dial up some of these detectives. The case has been cold enough. Oh yeah, no <laughs> doubt, man. We'll just. I, w- I would love to do that. Call him on speakerphone and just, you know. Oh, man. That would be fucking awesome. That would be sick. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, So I guess fucking like it and subscribe it so when we call these detectives <laughs> that it looks fine that Although, we're I don't not know, just dude. three fucking idiots. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some cool recreation stuff here. Just be like, look, dude, we got fucking, dude, we got air hockey. You know how much the, the fucking <laughs> cops love wreck stuff? <laughs> It's like you fucking yeah. want to swim in OJ's. You want to play Just pool to get at Casey's. FaceTime with us. Yeah. They get to. They have to see that there's <laughs> air hockey you in the see background. One of those detectives come in here to just start sniffing around. Like, <laughs> where's the ski ball? <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you guys as always. And um, yeah, I would say sometime in the next couple of weeks we'll have that up somewhere. I'll announce where it's going to be, and we'll fucking have it up for you. And um, Yeah, that'll be fun, and we'll continue to do shit like that because I feel like with every episode that we've done, there's been a ton of shit that I feel like has been meat left on the bone. Right, That we could have dealt further Even if uh, we do another one that's like an amalgam of the first three. Oh, my God, that would be so much fun. Yeah. Hell yeah, dude. Dude, yeah. Mike, you're the fucking man. Sorry, we should save this for for afterwards, but we should do like a, a speed murder where we like set a timer. And they would switch the fucking murders every like five minutes. Yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. god, that'd be fun. I mean, we, that might blow through like ninety episodes. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> but, but yeah, whatever. Now, nah, once you get to a point in Patreon, you can be like, "All right, we could touch more on these guys." Do yeah. A quick round. I don't know. Fucking ten dollar level will summon the devil <laughs> for you. We'll fucking yeah. do Ouija stuff. You'll well, make us say the N word, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Longer left handed handshakes. <laughs> <laughs> Longer handshakes. Longer eye contact. Dude, that would be cool if we started like sullying the reputations of demons. To be like, are you sure you want to spell that out? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's twenty twenty one, man. <laughs> Cancel demons. (laughs) (laughs) Then the demon just starts going, I apologize. (laughs) But it is a part of my journey. (laughs) (laughs) I do truly believe that all lives matter. (laughs) Yeah, they'd definitely be an all souls matter crew. (laughs) 
I am flawed. <laughs> I'm only slamming cabinets because I'm frustrated with myself. <laughs> That is. That's just. That's just the ghost of dads just frustrated with the family yeah. members not closing the cabinets. I can't fucking do anything right. <laughs> Would it kill you to turn on the goddamn? <laughs> close the goddamn window when you put on the heat. Ninety fucking degrees outside. Close the door. The dogs are bark when they're ready to come back in. <laughs> Would it flipping. kill you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. All right, man. All right, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. We'll look for you soon, and I appreciate you as always. And have a good night. Bye, y'all. <laughs>